From the Microsoft Technology Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota, this is Tech Connection Live. Brought to you by Component One Ultimate. Download your free trial at componentone.com slash ultimate. Up next, Visual Studio Licensing by Chris Wooden, District Manager, U.S. Heartland at SoftChoice. So you guys have finally waited and gotten to the most exciting part of today's event, which is vStudio Licensing. So the wait's finally over. My name is Chris Wood and I'm the uh, district manager for SoftChoice in Minnesota and elsewhere in the Midwest. There's a good chance that SoftChoice has worked with the organization uh, where you are at uh, since we are the largest uh, provider of Microsoft Enterprise licensing solutions in Minnesota. Uh, and most of our business revolves around that Microsoft stack, whether it be hardware, software, or uh, infrastructure services. Uh, but certainly at the core of our business is Microsoft technology and specifically how we add value to our customers is in the way that we uh, develop a technology plan around a Microsoft platform and then all of the hardware and software infrastructure that supports it. Uh, as we get into those uh, engagements, uh, where we typically spend a lot of time is understanding the most efficient, low-cost, low-risk way to license that environment. And certainly uh, one of the more complex areas in which Microsoft licensing uh, consumes our time is with vStudio. And I don't think I need to tell anyone in this room that vStudio licensing has undergone significant changes in the last few years. It's continuously under flux. Uh, and knowledge of those licensing changes, the component technologies that are included, is obviously critical to the developer in making sure that uh, you're, you're, you have the development technologies that you need at the most cost-effective uh, solution. All right, so I don't want to spend too much more time uh, introducing you to SoftChoice. Uh, really, I'm, I'm here to talk about vStudio licensing on behalf of, uh, behalf of Microsoft and uh, some of the most important changes that have come out in the last few, uh, few years. Uh, with that said, please don't hesitate to chime in if you have any questions, comments. Uh, with that said, I'll make sure that we do save some time at the end to answer any questions that you have. So right now, we're still under the vStudio 2010 release. Uh, that is the active release. However, the way that vStudio 2010 is licensed has changed significantly just in the last year. Uh, so don't necessarily assume that the uh, licensing turnover that happened at the end of 2010 with the release of vStudio 2010 still applies. With that said, we're going to talk about some of the licensing considerations that you should have uh, under the, uh, the current banner. The nice thing about the changes that have happened in the last few years is that vStudio licensing has generally gotten a lot more consistent and predictable. Uh, in 2009, there was literally 17 different uh, titles of vStudio licensing paths that you could leverage. Now that's really brought down to three primary packages with some uh, various add-ons. But there's essentially three vStudio licensing packages now, which you can see up here. Uh, a few things I want to highlight on this slide, and then what we'll be doing is talking about what the transition paths have been from previous versions of vStudio into the 2010 banner, as well as the component technologies uh, that come with these different suites. But the first thing to highlight is that uh, there really are only three uh, packages of vStudio now. That's specifically professional, premium, and ultimate. We'll review the differences between those in a moment. And, and in almost all scenarios, we're going to see that vStudio is also licensed with the MSDN subscription, uh, which essentially takes the place of software assurance for any other Microsoft technology, but of course also includes all of the developer subscriptions that you would need. One of the key changes that you'll notice under the 2010 licensing model, though, is that there is no distinction between the MSDN subscription for the license. It used to be that there would be MSDN Premium, MSDN Pro, and then a few other flavors uh, that you could attach to any other version of vStudio, which created an om almost endless combination uh, vStudio licensing paths. That's gone away under the 2010 banner, and now there's uh, one consistent level of MSDN subscription that applies directly to the vStudio license. So I'm sure most of the people in this room are looking at this thinking, well, I don't own Ultimate Premium or Pro because I remember buying into one of the team suites, team database or team tests, and that's what I'm using. And that's true. That may be the version that you're using, but that's no longer an active license from Microsoft, and it would have been transitioned into one of these three uh, programs. So let's talk about those transition paths right now. These transi transition paths exist and have already been applied to your license if you own MSDN against that vStudio license. 
So some of you may have been using any of the team roles in vStudio before. Uh, these are not uh, exhaustive, but the most popular ones were Suite, Test, Dev, Architect, and DB. Any of those team roles were automatically grandfathered into the vStudio Ultimate Edition. On the next slide, we'll actually take a look at what components are included in Ultimate. But needless to say, this is the most expansive, all-encompassing suite for vStudio that uh, Microsoft has. Um, so know that if you purchase your license with MSDN under any of these team suites, you now have complete functionality under the Ultimate program. When your MSDN comes up for renewal, if it hasn't in the last year and a half, you will then have the opportunity to renew it as ultimate. Now, one of the things that I should remind everyone, because this usually catches people at renewal, is that to renew it at MSDN, you would have to pay the ultimate cost. That may be more than the cost you paid when you originally went into one of the team suites. So at that juncture, when it comes time to renew your MSDN subscription, you would have been grandfathered the ultimate rights, but you can renew down to premium or pro uh, if uh, you don't need all of the ultimate components. vStudio uh, Premium did not exist as a vStudio package before the 2010 release. You would have had uh, vStudio Pro with MSDN Premium or MSDN Professional if you weren't using one of the team roles. So this is when there used to be a distinction between uh, MSDN subscriptions. You could either do it with pro or premium uh, packages. As I said, that's going away. MSDN is consistent for all three suites. If you did have vStudio Pro with MSDN Premium, you are now transitioned into vStudio Premium as a license that comes with the MSDN subscription. If you had vStudio Pro with Pro MSDN, that was then grandfathered into vStudio Pro. So let's just take a quick look then at what components rule up under the new vStudio packages. So what we're looking at right now is Pro. And this is your basic vStudio package that includes all components that you would need for basic desktop development. Uh, most commonly, people are using vStudio Pro if it's basic Office, OS, SharePoint development. Uh, it does come, obviously, with the basic tools for Silverlight and cloud development as well. If I step that up or purchase new, with premium, and I should make that point, any vStudio license with active MSDN can be stepped up to premium. You don't have to rebuy the license. Essentially, the cost to step up is the, the difference between a new vStudio Pro license and premium license. In premium, what I'm primarily going to get is a lot of the database development tools, amongst others, including some preliminary testing functionality as well. But typically, our database developers are using premium. If, however, you want no restrictions whatsoever in the uh, vStudio development that you're performing, organizations are quickly going to Ultimate. And we've seen Ultimate rapidly uh, adopted, primarily because of the transition paths that Microsoft released with 2010 that made it so easy to get to Ultimate. But in Ultimate, in addition to all the other uh, components, you're going to find expanded capabilities primarily for testing. With that said, the next thing I want to talk about is some of the licensing options I have for these different vStudio packages. Uh, again, I'm sure I don't need to tell you that there are uh, seemingly endless different licensing agreements for any Microsoft technology. The ones that you guys would probably be most familiar with would be, of course, your box product. You can buy vStudio out of the box and attach an MSDN subscription to it. We highly not recommend that because it requires very little commitment to get into a uh, volume licensing agreement, which can start with something what we call an open agreement. If you have ever licensed under open business, open value, uh, vStudio licenses can easily be added to an open agreement. And typically, uh, smart for an organization that's going to be less than 100 or 150 PCs. If it's greater than that, there's a good chance your organization is already using another type of volume licensing agreement, something like a select agreement, which is one notch up from the uh, open agreement. The purchasing uh, threshold you would need to qualify for select agreement typically starts with an organization that has around 150 or 200 PCs. I can now add vStudio with MSDN or without MSDN, although we don't recommend that, to a select agreement. Now, if your organization has made a halfway significant to standardizing on the Microsoft platform, there's a good chance that some of the technologies are going to be attached with software assurance, whether it's in the data center or on the uh, PC. So that would include things like your client access licenses, the desktop OS, or Office. Then there's a good chance your organization is purchasing with software assurance. If they're at least 200 PCs uh, large, there's a very good chance they're doing that on what's called the enterprise agreement. 
If, if any of those enterprise products I was just talking about are licensed with software assurance, they should absolutely be on an enterprise agreement. Uh, the basic tenets of a Microsoft enterprise agreement are this, is that any of the, quote, enterprise products that are added to an enterprise agreement are now licensed for all qualified desktops in that environment. They can be running any version, any edition of the uh, enterprise product uh, for all qualified desktops. No purchases are necessary when you deploy. They're simply an annual true up uh, to keep that agreement current and right size to the environment. Traditionally, vStudio was licensed on that enterprise agreement on what we call the desktop enrollment. So on the same enrollment or the same product selection form where you would find the Office, OS, your server licenses, you would also add vStudio. Two years ago, however, Microsoft released two new types of enrollments that go along with the desktop enrollment. The enrollment for core infrastructure products, which includes things like uh, System Center and your Windows servers, and the enrollment for application platform. Of course, your application platform products includes things like SQL and vStudio. Now, one of the reasons that you might not have heard of the EAP or that you're not using it today is because when it was originally released, the barriers for entry to an EAP, especially with vStudio, were considerably tall. You would have to add, I think at the time, it was about 100 vStudio licenses to the EAP to be eligible for it. So typically reserved for very large uh, enterprise organizations. About a year ago, though, Microsoft changed the uh, entry qualification for the Enrollment for Application platform, and now I only need 20 vStudio licenses to qualify for that EAP. What are the benefits of the EAP? They include all the same benefits of an enterprise agreement. Uh, uh, basically, I'm going to license all the developers that need vStudio. I can upgrade, deploy new licenses whenever I want without ever having to cut a purchase order. You simply right size or true up the developer environment on that EAP once a year anniversary time. In addition to easing management of vStudio on the EAP, the other benefit I get is a significant cost avoidance when I add new vStudio licenses. If I'm comparing the cost of adding a vStudio license uh, to an EAP versus an enterprise agreement, which is traditionally the most cost-effective way to purchase vStudio, I'm going to find the cost of adding uh, premium and pro is at a 15% discount over the EA cost and about 40% if I was purchasing versus a select. If I'm adding ultimate, it's going to be a 40% discount versus uh, purchasing on the, uh, the desktop enrollment. So if your organization has 20 developers using vStudio, there is no reason that you should not be purchasing those on the enrollment for application platform. Th that actually takes me through the, the bulk of my content here. Again, we wanted to highlight what's changed in vStudio licensing from the old model to the 2010 banner, what's changed since, and of course the most cost effective ways to procure and manage vStudio licenses through the enrollment for application platform. Any other questions I can answer while I'm here, guys, on vStudio licensing? Or Microsoft licensing in general? Yeah. Is it going to change for no. level 11? No. It's going to be the same. No. The licensing model is going to be the same, and the tenants of the EAP are remaining as well. So thanks, everyone, for the uh, time today. And uh, enjoy the rest of the event. Tech Connection Live, brought to you by Component One Ultimate. Download your free trial at componentone.com slash ultimate. It's easy to build everything, everywhere, with the right tools and resources. Component One Ultimate delivers just that. Whether you're a Windows, Web, or XAML developer, the Component One Ultimate Collection enables you to create any type of application. WinForms, WPF, Silverlight, ASP.NET Web Forms, MVC, Metro, Windows Phone, iPhone, Compact Framework, and even ActiveX. This comprehensive package not only delivers hundreds of .NET controls, plus powerful OLAP data analysis controls, it even includes SharePoint web parts, documentation and screen capturing tools, light switch extensions, and tools for ADO.NET Entity Framework and RIA services. Plus, Esri mapping controls, the most comprehensive controls available for GI application development. Component One Ultimate, the ultimate collection of tools for software developers. Go to componentone.com to download your free trial of Component One Ultimate.